Hey guys, just wanted to make a quick video here in regards to the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. I know a big issue a lot of people have been having is trying to get the dual SIM technology to function uh, within the United States. Um, as far as the carriers that, that will support it, it is supposed to be AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. So I'm gonna tell you a little story, take you through my experience um, it, it, it is going to be a little bit in depth. I just want to explain everything step by step and all the aggravation I went through to actually get to this point where I am today. That way you guys don't have to do this. Okay, so I spoke to AT&T at the end of uh, September. I received my device called AT&T. Within iOS 12.0.1, if you go ahead and go into uh, update to the latest version um, and go into settings, go to cellular, uh, you should see a button that says add cellular plan. Now, if you click on that button, it's gonna bring up a little camera window um, and it's gonna tell you to, to scan your QR code or you can enter details manually. So after speaking with AT&T multiple times about this, uh, they told me to call back on the 26th. So I called back on the 26th. I was on the phone with them for almost six hours. They, they transferred me to a bunch of different representatives, but then finally I spoke to a gentleman that said, no, I've done this before, I know exactly how to do this, and we're gonna take it from here. Uh, basically, I, I spent another 45 minutes on, on the phone with him. All he did was the same thing that every other representative have, had tried to do, which was move my, my primary number over to an eSIM. None of them knew or were aware that there was a step prior to that, which is activating that eSIM within the device itself. Now that's where everyone has confusion. So in order to activate the eSIM within the device itself, you need a QR code or information, of, which is a, a SM-DP plus address and an activation code from your carrier. So when I ended the phone call with him yesterday, they had to reset my SIM card. They said they were going to issue a, you know, put in a, a ticket and, and have them reset my SIM card and basically go ahead and put my primary number back on my physical SIM card because they couldn't figure out why the eSIM is not working. Uh, you know, I, I, I woke up this morning, I looked at my phone, I, I reset it a few times, uh, reset the network settings, nothing worked. I still didn't have service. So I decided to go to at and uh, the at and store at my mall a local mall to have them give me a new SIM card and get this phone up and running because I can't be without my main line any longer. Uh, so I did that. The representative that worked at AT&T and he was giving me such deceitful information, such lies that unfortunately I had to call him out on it. And I, I tried to explain to the gentleman that his information that he was giving me was completely incorrect and that he is um, you know, he needs more education in the topic, uh, in, in, in the eSIM or the iPhone, you know, device in itself topic. Uh, he didn't like that. So basically he, you know, he went and he went on a tangent. He, he went and told some other, some, some other representative, you're going to deal with him now because I'm not going to deal with him. Uh, and he got very upset because I told him he, he needed more education on, on what I'm talking about. Uh, Remember, customer's always right. That's, that's the number one uh, rule of business. The customer's always right. Apparently that does not resonate to employees these days. They, they, they take things personally. So as he was walking to the back, he yells to me, you know, I need more education. Well, I have a bachelor's degree. Do you have a bachelor's degree? I, I said, sir, with all due respect, this is not, you know, we're not here to, to uh, debate educations. We're here to try to resolve my issue. That being said, I, I didn't want to deal with him any longer. I, I spoke to the new representative. Um, I tried to explain to the new representative what I was explaining to him, but for some reason, you know, they believed that they knew better. So I left it at that. I received my new SIM card. I had my original line working on the physical SIM card. Again, I left, I was kind of happy. I said, okay, at least my phone's working. Walking out of the mall, I said, you know, let me just, let me just go to Apple. Let me go to Apple to see if they know if there's anything else to do or anything else they can, they can tell me to do um, to get this to work. I said, it's their device, they, they should know something. So I went to Apple 
And when I tell you, I have never seen this Apple Store location with so many people in it before in my life. Um, and, you know, unless it might have been like a, a release day of a, of a new device, but there, this must have been like almost at maximum capacity. I, I, there was not even enough room to walk through the Apple Store. So I said, I'm never gonna get help here. It's not even worth a try. So I stood next to a representative that was looked like he was getting finished helping some other people, and I was waiting to ask him if you know if there was anybody that could assist me with this you know with this problem I was having, and just you know just out of the corner of my eye I see someone walking from the back of the back of the store uh, to to like towards right past me. Um, I, I asked him. I, I said, "Excuse me." I said, "This is my situation. This is my problem. I'm having." Uh, are you familiar with it? Do you know anything that can help me? He said, you know, I'm not too familiar with it. Let me try to go get somebody that, that is familiar with the eSIM technology that, that knows a little bit more about this. So I said, great. I said, okay, I'm gonna be able to speak to somebody finally that, that is familiar with this technology. So he goes, he, he speaks to somebody, comes back in a few minutes and basically tells me, uh, sir, you know, this is the, the information that we're having that we have, and everything says that it should be functioning from AT and T side and from our side. But unfortunately, it's it's a cellular related issue because you have to get a new SIM card and you have to get a, a um, you know have to have a new IC ICAC ID number. It, it's just a complete, uh, basically a complete second line. So they're saying everything after you know after the software update is in AT and T's hands. So I said, interesting. I said, because they're telling me it's you guys and you're telling me it's them and, and nobody really has a definitive answer like what is going on and what's gonna take to get this feature to work. I mean, Apple says it works. Um, some of the representatives I spoke to from AT&T promised me it was gonna work and it just, it, it never did. So he said, give me one second. He said, I'm gonna go to the back. I'm gonna try to speak to somebody else. So he went to the back, took maybe 10 minutes in the back. And I was expecting him to come out and tell me the, you know, the usual, the spiel that they don't know what's going on and, and it's probably an AT&T issue. So, and I was, you know, that's, that's pretty much where my mind was set to, that it, this is an AT&T issue, the software update is there. Um, you know, I am a, a beta tester for Apple, so I do have a beta version on my phone, so I'm utilizing the absolute latest version um, of, of the iOS system. And it was just very strange that I was getting, you know, all finger pointing. Basically, it's 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 this company, it's this company. So he went to the back, and he actually blew my mind when he walked out, and he handed me a card, which I will show you in a minute. Now this card is it's branded AT and T. It's got the AT and T logo right on the back of it, and he gives me this card, and this card has. For, for security purposes, I'm not gonna show you the front of the card with all the barcodes and everything like that um, until I black it out, but this card has the ICC ID number on it, it has a UPC number on it, it has a SKU number, and then it has an eSIM number. Then it has that QR code that the iPhone's looking for to activate your eSIM. So I, I, I said, I really appreciate it, Kevin. I, I thanked him, he, was, he, he seemed like he was a very, very nice young man. He, uh, he, he handled the situation very professionally, even though he didn't need to spend time with me because there were a thousand other people in the store. He took those few extra minutes to, to satisfy a customer. Now that's customer service, and that, that representative in himself it should be rewarded for, you know, for providing excellent customer service. Cause he could have easily said, sir, you know, you're gonna have to wait to see one of the genius technicians or sir, there's just too many people in here. I can't, I can't deal with this right now. There, there could have been a thousand excuses he could have gave me, but to actually, to, to man up and to, to, to do his best to resolve the situation, then to actually resolve the situation, uh, which he didn't even know he could do, was just great. I mean, that's, that's customer service at its finest. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a quick video and I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put this out there on YouTube and I want you guys to share this with anyone who's having this issue, all right? Um, because this is gonna resolve your problems that you're having. This is gonna get you to be able to use that eSIM uh, 
eSIM card that's, that's on your phone. It's gonna get you to be able to use the dual SIM technology and to be able to have two phones on one line. Um, I do have that now. So it, it's a great feeling to be able to not have to carry around my, my business line or my second device anymore. I have my iPhone XS Max and that's what I carry. I, I, you know, I, I get both of my lines. It's, it's, it's an excellent feeling. It's a great feature that iPhone, uh, that Apple, I'm sorry, Apple implemented. And now you, the user, just have to know how to be able to activate it and to be able to, to, uh, to set it up because unfortunately you will not get this correct information from AT&T. And the reason I say this, I will give you a, a quick little uh, uh, ending to this story. So once, once I received this card from, from Apple, he said, you're gonna have to get it, probably, seems to me you'll probably have to have it activated by AT&T. So I said, okay, I, I, I was gonna walk down to the AT&T store again, but I saw they were really busy with a bunch of customers. So I said, let me just call, a, uh, I'm sorry, let me just go online and try to activate it um, via the AT&T website, activate SIM card. So I did do that. I, I, I unfortunately couldn't complete the last step, which was an email verification because my email um, that was set up on my AT&T account was, was going to an email address that I no longer have access to. So long story short, I had to contact AT&T customer service or go into the store. There was still a long line in the store, so I decided to contact AT&T customer support. So I gave her a really, I contacted AT&T support, I gave her a really quick you know, overview on the issue. Um, you know, initially I thought it was it was gonna be simple. You know, it was just putting in an ICC ID number and an IMEI and, and boom, activating the device, activating the SIM card. Um, for some reason, you know, I, I told her that they were not educated on, on the topic and I was gonna produce a, a video, a quick video to put out that explains step-by-step step for people to, uh, you know, for people to, to, to understand how to do this. I don't think they liked that very much. I'm gonna have to say I think AT&T was, was um, pretty, uh, pretty unhappy when they, when they heard that. So basically what they told me was that this service is not supported at the moment. And mind you, I was on the phone with them for six, seven hours yesterday while they were telling me, yes, it is supported. So I told her to look back on the notes that should be on the account, you know, theoretically every customer service representative should add notes when they speak to a customer. Um, and she said, no, there was nothing noting that I called in about eSIM yesterday. It was only, I called in to customer service. So I called in, mind you, about five or six times. I had call backs, I had managers, I had uh, supervisors. I was transferred to multiple different departments. So well, the information she was giving me was completely false. And I could tell that she was being a little bit standoffish. So I decided to ask her for a supervisor. And I said, ma'am, I'd like to speak to your supervisor. She said, okay, hold on. She put me on a hold for almost 15 minutes. She thought I would hang up. But I, I, you know, I, stuck, I stuck with it. I waited for her to come back. She said, I'm sorry. All the supervisors are on lunch at this moment. And mind you, this was like five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I don't know you know, what time zone you're in having lunch, but uh, I, I really, it, it was very hard to believe. So I said, there's no supervisor available uh, to, to speak with me about this issue. She said, no, I'm sorry, we can't act, we, we don't support the service and uh, you know, I can't transfer you to anyone. I said, okay, well, what about another representative that is maybe more familiar about the, uh, the, the issue? She said, no, I can't transfer you to anyone. I said, well, why, why is that? I said, where, you know, why are you being so standoffish all of a sudden? And uh, you know, she didn't give me any response. She just said, sir, this, this unfortunately, we can't do this at, at this time and I can't transfer you to anyone. So I said, okay, no problem. End of story. Um, I had a, a few choice words to say to her, <laughs> hung up the phone, uh, walked back into the AT&T store, went to the representative that I spoke to previously, showed him this card, I said, could you please activate this eSIM for me? Within two minutes, two and a half minutes, my phone was active with two lines. I could see both lines. I could see the, the new eSIM that he just set up for me and I could see the original primary line. I showed him, I said, sir, this is what you need to show your customers. This is what you need to tell your customers. You need this card in order to activate the device, the eSIM on the device. It, it, AT&T can't push an activation 
Uh, they need you to, to enter information either manually or scan through the QR code on this card. So I gave them that information. Apple told me to tell them that the Apple store has these cards. You can pick them up from Apple. AT&T should be getting these cards too, but who knows when they're gonna receive them. Um, at this point, I don't know if I'm the only one uh, functioning on iOS 12.1 beta 5 that actually has a has the ability to to have a primary and secondary line or to be able to utilize their eSIM. Um, unfortunately, nobody was able to give me any information in regards to how to do this except um, you know little bits and pieces that I picked up on um, you know here and there from from reading documents and and looking at other people's reviews and stuff. That's why I want to put this video out there. Uh, you know, I think it's gonna help a lot of people. I think a lot of people are really gonna benefit from this, including AT&T customer support, including Apple customer support, because none of them really mentioned this card to me. Uh, but to me, without having this card or without having that address and that activation code, you can't activate the eSIM on the device. That's the main problem. So without the eSIM active, um, they, can, they can port over you know your number and make it an eSIM and try to try to do it that way but you're gonna get no service every time um, now this no service is not gonna go away one representative told me it'll go away in a half hour or an hour once the eSIM picks it up it, you know all night it didn't go away so um, I had to find this out for myself um, unfortunately it is very new technology um, Apple should have put a little bit more a uh, little bit more support documentation out there AT&T uh, one message for you guys is I'm sorry, but you need to, to train your your customer servers, service representatives better. Um, they Each one of them gave me a different reason, a different excuse, a different, um, you know, none of them had solid information of why this wasn't working or how to make it work or, uh, you know, everything was basically an excuse um, or a, a cover up. Um, and at the end of it, I had to figure it out for myself. Um, so now I would like you guys to use this lesson to, to understand that sometimes there are people that are more familiar with technology than yourself. And you should allow those people to teach you and, and allow those people to educate you so you can learn something new. Instead of getting upset and throwing a tangent and you know, comparing educations, business degrees, master degrees, you know, we could sit here all day and compare education, but that's not gonna resolve the customer issue. You know, I, I want you guys to understand that customer service is at the forefront of, forefront of your business. If you guys can't provide great customer service, there's nothing holding your customers to you. Maybe a two-year contract, maybe, you know, a couple terms and conditions, but other than that, once those two years are expired, that customer is still gonna resent you and they're not gonna wanna utilize your service any longer. With that being said, I'm gonna move forward and show you guys the, the screenshots that I took as well as the, uh, as well as the uh, screen recording of activating my second line and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this video out on YouTube. All right, I appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe.